to Grandma's Attic Music Review. So tonight's going to be a little different for me because this is a repeat performer. However, it will not be a repeat performance for us. Two years ago, as most of you already know, um, I was busy doing Grandma's Attic and doing the things that I did and working and all those things. And then I got cancer and my son died. So there were some things that had to change, right? I couldn't do the show that I had booked because I was busy taking care of my child that was no longer with us. And I had booked, not because I had seen her perform, but at the advice of other people. So people kept saying, you got to check out this person, this person, this person. And I was like, okay, so we got her on the show. I couldn't be here. Allie Kaufman came in, pinched hit for me. She's an amazing interviewer. She does a radio show at WCNI, and she came in and did my TV show that day. Absolutely amazing. You can see it up on YouTube. Just check it out. But I didn't get to do the interview. I have watched the interview since then, and I've watched this young lady perform. She is amazing. She's incredible. She's young and she writes her own music. And I think that you're just going to have such a good time tonight. I know I'm going to have a good time tonight because I get to interview her as a virgin. I get to do something I haven't done before with her. And that's fun. So please help me welcome into your home, into your evening, and into your musical kaleidoscope, Sophie Spanner. Hi, uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm so excited to, to do this with you this time and to be back and you know get to perform some of my, my new songs. Um, so this first one is called Life of a Rubber Duck. Living like a rubber duck Floating in the bathtub, trying to not give up. I think the days are longer now, they're longer than they were before. I'm a pen run out of ink. Nothing left to say and nothing left to write or think. I can't say that I'm not afraid of the letters on my bedroom floor. Live a quiet life of sin Sex, drugs, rock and roll And keeping all my feelings in And though my love might pass me by At least I can say that I tried Wear the same clothes every day So much easier than putting all my words away The day will come where everyone I know died but I am on my way and I just might wave at my own reflection 
direction Call me cautious, call me dumb Unavailable and beating the same dead drum I guess you could say that all my other paths are done Reading comics about the end Thick black lines to illustrate this terrifying mess Where in the words might make you sad But the pictures sure are fun And I am on my way And I've got no words to say No, not this time no, not this time. Thank you. Um, this next song is called uh, Niche Interests. Um, so, yeah, I wrote this a couple days ago. So it is f fresh, nice, nice and fresh and ripe and all those good things. <laughs> I've got all of these DVDs that I've never seen Even got all of the Brady Bunch Plus deleted scenes And all of these books that I'm sure I'll never read Cause I'm too dumb to pick out one And stick with it it seems Yeah, I can look at pictures but not for all too long Cause before I know it I'm obsessed with some stupid song I must have heard it years ago Only once or twice the Chorus surely bores us, but the second verse is nice. Well, Grapes of Wrath is big, but East of Eden's bigger, and I'm not sure I could paint a pretty picture like Steinbeck can, or Vonnegut, or Dickinson, or Plath. And sometimes I worry I've forgotten basic math. Well, I still don't know if it's niche or if it's niche. And when I took my dog outside, I once forgot the leash. Yeah, of course, we're all missing in our own little ways like I've never seen Citizen Kane and maybe that's okay and of course I've got all these little things I like like Lenny Bruce and Andy Kaufman and riding on my bike that's a little bit too small for me I think it's meant for kids but it gets you where you need to go so it works in a pinch and yes I'm an adult cause I just turned 18 but I'm not sure that I know yet exactly what that means I could say that I'm young at heart and maybe that'd be true but if I said it too loudly then maybe I'd be through well, I still don't know if it's niche or if it's niche And when I took my dog outside, I once forgot the leash Well, of course, we're all missing in our own little ways Like, sometimes I'm not all too smart I guess that that's okay, that's okay <laughs> I have all these pages in front of me and they're all like just handwritten I need to make copies of things um, but I'm quite I'm quite bad at like organizing all my stuff so for now it's just written in my like chicken scratch um. this is called getaway car cars fumbling quietly through the darkness Lights cutting the highway in two I'm sleeping in the back of your getaway car Getting away from what? Well, that's up to you We pull soundlessly off to a gas station Ask if I want a drink I say sure You come back with a handful of change And a soda can You like me But I like you more And the 
desert is as vast as the ocean At the bottom we're still not quite sure what we will find Days go by like minutes while minutes are lifetimes So I, I will be yours if you will be mine Try to count stars through the sunroof While you think that it's stupid to try Once I've reached five or six hundred I can't help but start to wonder why are found underground now so why do I always ask looking up guess that I'm just a creature of habit who never thinks anything that she's got is enough and the desert is as vast as the ocean at the bottom we're still not quite sure what we will find days go by like minutes well minutes are lifetimes so i i will be yours if you will be mine we're fumbling quietly through the darkness a more suited pair than us is hard to find i'm sleeping in the back of your getaway car getting away from all that we had in mind the desert is as vast as the ocean at the bottom we're still not quite sure what we will find days go by like minutes while minutes are lifetimes so i i will be yours if you will be mine Um, this song, I, this is probably one of my, like, personal favorites of mine. I don't know, not that, but it's very, like, personal to me. I like it a lot. Um. Visual explanations of all the secrets that I left behind for you to conquer to treasure and rewind and i said holy ghost and lenny bruce watch over me with fear and everlasting love like i wish i did for you my love my sun and stars my chipping paint the strings on my guitar i played that summer night the campfire light oh it hit you just right now i am thinking a number between sad and happy I wish you were there in my bed When I got kinda sappy And I cried for a while Tears on cards sent to me by friends Who all have cars to drive out to the desert Quietly till someone puts a price upon Their pretty head so beautiful When all is said and done Said and done Well right now i am thinking about what to tell my best friends not to break their hearts right now i am thinking about what to tell my best friends not to fall apart so i say hey some things change some things change hey 
it's okay, it's okay. Visual explanations of all the things I love so dearly, lost in time or in translation, sent out to the big space station in my mind that floats around. Collecting dust and rejeweling a crown that someone forgot here. It's stuck between my brain and my left here. I am forevermore for only this and never for the last time. When all is said and right now, I am thinking about what to tell my not to break their hearts right now I am thinking about what to tell my family not to fall apart so I say hey some things change some things change Hey, it's okay, it's okay When all is said and done Hey, some things change, some things change Thank you. Um, this next song is about uh, a musician that I really like. Um, and yeah, I don't know, I just tried to like Sometimes I just like to write about other people. <laughs> um. Oh my goodness gracious. Jim. Morrison was 27 when he died after a life of strangeness cause people are strange Jim Morrison knew why everything happened the way it does and how everyone let him down because Jim Morrison was 27 when he died I'll be 18 in just one week so you know and I'll live my dreams of being strange so it goes and I won't smoke and I won't drink cause Jim might think that I'll end up like him well I'll be 18 in just one week so who knows well the LA girls are fine and I'm all right and the riders on the storm are quiet tonight I wonder why Jim died in France well one last dance was never had Baby never lit his fire and rumor has it she still feels bad I would too if I were you but guess it's not my place to say Would Jim be dancing now if he lived today? Well, the LA girls are fine and I'm alright Riders on the storm are quiet tonight, I wonder why. Well, the LA girls are fine and I'm alright. And the riders on the storm are quiet tonight, I wonder why. Thank you. <laughs> um, this song is called 10 more tokens 10 more tokens um.
Six more weeks of winter I heard you called my sister Can't you tell that we're singing? Live from New York I think that It's time we face the facts And just say what we're thinking Old pencil dead eraser try to face her are you sure that you're all right old clock dead alarm i didn't cause you harm well i hope that you sleep tight and all of these promises are damaged but not broken and all I read who oh, would need ten more tokens. I loved a pretty girl in, in such a pretty world, and I know that she's dreaming. And all those days we sat, never sour, cruel, or sad. Well, you always blame. from Alaska I guess I should have asked her why she'd ever love me old shorts there hand me down you made a righteous downer from up above me and all oh, 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 of these promises are damaged but not broken I read win me ten more tokens and the day is done when you say it's done and the fun is had when you say it's fun and all those days I love were nothing but postcards from the sun from the sun well all of these are damaged but not broken and all of these books I read will win me will win me ten more tokens um, and this one is called do you remember um, so, you know, I hope you do remember. So bad at small talk. <laughs> the day that I got your name wrong? Do you remember that day? Do you remember the week I told jokes until we screamed? Do you remember that week? Do you remember the year that <laughs> ear to ear? Do you remember that year? Do you remember the month that we only spoke in do you remember that month? Ooh, I do. Ooh, I sure do. Do you remember the day that our hair was turning gray? Do you remember that? That I thought we hit our peak. Do you remember that week? Do you remember the month where we always forgot lunch? Do you remember that month? Do you remember the year that you smiled from ear to ear? Do you remember that year?
that I called you down to earth after searching for so long. Do you remember the way it was over anyway? Before we knew it, it was gone. Ooh, ooh, do you? Ooh, This friend who lives underwater, and on weekends I bring her into shore. We talk about our Tuesdays and think of better times. They're slipping, and I just wish we had more. I've got this friend who lives underwater, but I'm not really sure if she can breathe. I picture her with minnows and sharks and jellyfish exploring the turquoise ocean deep. So, 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 would you rather? So, 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 I could never, never understand. I've got this friend who's living on the sun now. I'm surprised she hasn't even burned. She looks at me from the sky, and I wish that I knew why. I'm forgetting everything I've learned. I've got this friend who's living on the sun now. She's always been the sunny kind of girl. I miss her back on Earth, but from her I learned the universe's center is a pearl. So, so. So, would you rather? So, 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 I could never. I got friend, she's a special type of person. She wears these special types of clothes. She's got such a special sense of humor. And I think it's very special that she knows that. Yes, absolutely. Um, all right, this song is called a uh, song for T.S. Eliot. He's my favorite poet. Um, yeah, so if you are familiar with his work, there's a lot of references to him in there. So, yeah. Moving forward, I think that we have got a few things to talk about. A perfect day for a banana fish and all those things I used to wish have found me now. And all those little days in our goth clothes and all those little ways those days start slowing, I wore them out. Do you believe in love proof rock or do you sit and mock me like it's not real? All these restaurants and hotels have caught me in a corner, so tell me, what's the deal? And all those pretty poems you read to me at night, and all those pretty stories, they have set me right, I learned to feel. So I say all Thursdays are broken, and the sky so faded and rash has spoken tell me what do you do you think that all my books are drowning how can i stop this now 
Tennessee and Louise, Rome and Joan and the Freeze are falling down. And all the things I've read, they haunt my every day. And all those things I loved, they're all going away. What's it all about? Well, I say all Thursdays are broken. And the sky is so faded and rash. Sophie's going to put her guitar down and come over and mic up, and we're going to talk about downtown New London. Studio 33, the Mariners um, Gallery, the Hygienic Gallery, listen, the Drunken Palette. These are all places that you need to go to to check out for really great, awesome, wonderful art. Art? Support a local artist. Support a local musician. Get out and support your local community because it's important, especially right now. So just do it, okay? All right. Welcome. Thank you so to much. To Grandma's. I'm so happy to have you here. I'm so happy to meet you face to face. I am too. I, I was like so looking forward to this and I'm very, very excited to be here and to be here with you and you know, to be talking with you and playing and all that good stuff. <laughs> it's exciting to be playing right now. Yeah, big time, big time. How has COVID affected you? Well, I've had a lot of time to write a lot of music, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, and I'm currently taking a gap year. Mm -hmm. um, I graduated from high school in June, and I got into Yale in March, and then I deferred my um, matriculation, as they call it. Um, and so I'll be going there in the fall. And in the meantime, I've just been working and writing music and stories and painting and all that good stuff and you know trying to keep myself busy you're extremely talented thank you <laughs> extremely talented you paint also as yeah. well as write music and stories and yeah <laughs> and t.s Eliot is one of your favorite authors yes oh my goodness <laughs> he wrote the basis for one of the most famous plays ever performed mm -hmm. didn't he yeah he's written a lot of stuff that like has really influenced a lot of amazing things. He also did write the collection of poetry that inspired Cats the Musical, which That's what is, I was talking about. Yeah, uh, you, whether it's a blessing or a curse, it, it is out there now, so. <laughs> have you seen Cats I have, live on stage? I have not seen it live on stage. I did see the movie adaptation, The movie's though. nothing. It was, it, it's nothing. everything. It's Com crazy. It yeah, but so it's funny. Nothing, it's nothing compared to seeing it live. That's because fair. live, the cats come out into the audience yeah. and, and it's it's amazing. I also just have a thing for like really terrible movies, so I think I was like, this is a must see. Okay, um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. I like B movies too. Movies that are rated B are usually better than some of the things that hit the big screen. That's just my opinion. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I. Um, John Waters is one of my favorite directors yeah. in the whole wide world. I'm sure you and I could talk about all those things, but right now we <laughs> want to talk about you. Let's talk about your music. What gets you to sit down and write a song? Um, usually I think I've just been like sitting on it for a while. Not even an idea, but just like the feeling of like, I could write a song, but it's not ready yet. Like I think I'm a very like intuitive writer mm -hmm. and a lot of it is based on just like opportunity. So if I have a moment just to like sit down and I feel like I haven't written in a while or like I feel like I've been kind of letting the, letting it like build up per mm -hmm. se, um, then I'm like, okay, I can do this. And then I just sit down and like start writing nonstop. Like I can't, I can count, you know, the number of times that I've started a song and then gone back to it like on one hand. I usually just like to get it going. Wow, that's one, impressive. One run. <laughs> Do you remember when you wrote your first song? Uh, honestly, not really. I was probably like 12 or 13, and I started on piano. I started, um, I taught myself piano 
um, and then I taught myself ukulele and guitar and stuff and like mm. so I was doing everything by ear and like just figuring everything out so it was probably a piano song but the first song that I performed I do remember my first time performing when was that um, it was when I was I think 13 in Michigan we were visiting a family friend of ours my dad's best friend and they had like this local concert thing and somehow he got my name on the list and so I performed and I remember I was so nervous afterwards. I was like, oh my gosh. But it was like in this small little area. So people around for the next few days were like, oh, you played the, like a couple songs. I was like, yeah, I did. And it was very, very cool. Definitely a good like dip your toes in the water kind of experience. Right. And you performed at the Nightingales. Yes. Um, Dan Stevens and Gail, Dan and Gail Stevens probably saw you and were like, you have to come and perform for us. Yes, they are the most amazing people. I like cannot thank them enough um, and you know for what they've done, not only for me, but for the community of like young musicians like me. Um, and that's also where I think I started to build a lot of like, I'll say networks, but network, networks and friendships um, with other people my age. Uh, who were, you know, young musicians, and now those are some of my best friends. So it's pretty, you know, cool to, like, have that um, as, like, a, a launching pad, I guess, for all of us. Right. They've been really good to the youth oh, for sure for music. Um, who are some of your favorite local young musicians? Um, there's a girl named Jess Kegley, who I just adore. She's absolutely fantastic. Um, she's a brilliant songwriter. Fantastic lyricist. Um, Sophia Griswold, um, who I think is at Berkeley right now in mm -hmm. Boston. Um, she's an like, unparalleled instrumentalist. I think she's absolutely incredible, and she's got the most beautiful voice. Um, and I also really like Greta Strobel. I was listening to her music the other day, and I was Greta's like, been here. Yeah, yeah. She's wonderful. We love Greta. I love that song, Josie. I was like, oh, wow. It's just so beautiful. Like, I, I totally, you know, I saw one of her posts on, like, my whatever social media and I was like oh I should listen to her music again and I was like just reminded of how incredible of a musician she is so like you she's also up on YouTube on the grandma's attic music review so if you want to see more of her that's what <laughs> you can do so one of the things that um, thrills me about you is that I'm just gonna use your saying you're not or you are the round peg in the square hole. You keep things going differently than anybody else I know. I don't know anybody <laughs> that writes music the way that you write music. Your music is definitely unique and um, I want to say abnormal, but it's not. It's so normal to listen to. It's so easy to hear, but it's not like anybody else's. What makes you think that you're, what makes you so that, what do you, why do you think that you are so unique? Um, well, I don't want this to be like a toot my own horn kind of Please answer. Please do. This is, <laughs> that's what this show is all, all right, about. All right. toot, your, <laughs> toot your little horn, my friend. That's what this show is all about, is tooting your own horn. Um, I think... The thing that's most important for me in my songwriting is drawing inspirations from a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. So I think my mind is very um, cyclical in nature in that like I'll spend a week just painting. Like that's all I'll be doing. I'll just be painting like crazy. I'll, you know, do a gazillion paintings and then I'll be done with that. And then I'll, you know, write like 20 pages of something and I'll be so excited about it. And then, you know, the next week like I'll play piano and I'll try to learn the entirety of like the... Muppets soundtrack or something, which is something that I've been working on. Um, and yeah, so I think like just getting to like draw inspiration from so many different places like is really important to me. And especially since I think that my music is very driven by the narrative mm -hmm. and like the story behind it. I agree with you. Um, so I think like just being someone who's really drawn to like story and, you know, stories and like narrative pull and st storytelling, I guess. Um, like, I think that's definitely something that, like, um, affects my, my writing style um, in, like, a way that I think is less uh, prevalent in today's, you know, music culture. I would not want to put you into even close of the same category as the, I don't even call it music, that's going on in top 
40 pop culture music <laughs> it's you're not even you're so much higher on, Thank much, you. on such a higher level um, intellectually spiritually and artistically you are at such a higher level than the garbage that's on the radio <laughs> these days I'm so I co <laughs> call them like I see them <laughs> I don't like pop radio that's I fair. don't like the junk that's out there <laughs> these days I don't think it's intellectually sound I think that you have a way of putting things out there that people actually can hear it and they might get a clue because of it so you graduated from high school and got accepted to Yale have you written a song about getting accepted to how did that feel to you because that's a big deal um I distinctly remember like the moment that I got in I was like just ecstatic like I wasn't it's the kind of thing where you like you don't go in expecting anything you're not like oh I know I'm gonna get in because no like that just doesn't happen right um and so I had like five decisions in a row and I got three rejections and I was like all right Yale's next my dad's like do you want to take a break maybe like take a breather in between I was like no I just want to go for it and you know I got accepted I was so excited my dog was going crazy because I was like screaming and <laughs> um I have not written a song about it actually I I don't know I think a lot of the songs that I write are like sort of s subtle like and you know I guess in a word like subtle um in that like they're not directly related to like anything really specific that's happened in my life like if you listen to one of my songs you're not like oh I know about that's about the time when she blah 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 um but I think definitely like you know the that's excitement, funny because like, I thought getaway car might have been about something real no just <laughs> <laughs> just a feeling I don't know I love thinking about the desert it's like one of the coolest things to me like I don't know I have all these dreams about like Arizona and like you know New Mexico and stuff and I always try to like I don't know transfer that to my music even though I've only been to the west coast like once <laughs> you'll do some traveling I and you'll so. do some <laughs> traveling with guitar in hand that's absolutely it's in your cards I can <laughs> I can see it I'm telling you you're going to do wonderful things well fingers crossed thank you <laughs> no you don't need to cross your fingers for this one. This All is right. fact. This is fact. You put it out there to the universe, and that's what's going to happen. That's just All how right. it is. That's the way we do things around here. <laughs> so um, I have to bring this up because it's affected myself and everybody I know that's heard it. You wrote a song called Round Peg in a Square Hole. Mm -hmm. It's an important song. It's an important song in today's culture. It's even more of an important song for people your age. And I think that it should be a number one hit. Thank you. It is better than all the garbage that's out there. But <laughs> it's a song that people need to hear. What made you write that song? How were you inspired to write such an amazing, amazing song? I think the root of that song, Square Peg Girls, is like, I don't know probably just inspiration that I drew from my friends mm -hmm. like in high school I had a you know small you know small friend group of like very close friend group mm -hmm. of a bunch of girls who were just kind of I don't know just fun and like goofy and quirky and like they were just so much fun to hang out with and so I took inspiration from all of them and I was like you know I've got this a uh, uh, an old neighbor of mine like I wrote about her and um I don't know I think I just was like, I want an anthem. I think that's like the best word to describe it is like anthem. It is. Um, you know, for people who just feel like they're, um, I guess, you know, marching to the beat of their own drum or, you know, a square peg in a round hole, whatever, you know, saying or uh, philosophy you want to subscribe to. Uh, like, I think it's really important that we encourage that because, you know, a lot of times there's like a, a call for normalcy and like standardization of personality and style and you know uh, even just like systems of thought and I think it's just important that we like mix things up sometimes and like support that and embrace that and be like wow it's cool that we can you know talk about things and like 
you just have a totally different perspective than me. Like, I love that. That's awesome. And that's the way that we should look at all of our friendships and all of the people. We need to understand that I'm not like everybody else. And people that want to be like everybody else probably aren't using all that they have that's not like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Know what I'm saying? So you've taken, and it is an anthem, by the way. It is an anthem that I think every high school girl that feels like she doesn't fit in, I was one of those. I never felt like I fit in. I was in my 40s before I started to feel like I could, I could maybe possibly fit in. And then I started to realize that I had to become myself. And I had to be me no matter what you think of me. And that song touches it and embraces it and you embrace it and it's all you. Thank you. It's, all, it's, it's so awesome. How do you feel that that's going to... Um, how do you feel that that's going to come out in the Yale College community? I am like, I literally can't even express how excited I am. But to find like other young musicians who will want to collaborate with me, people who know um, like uh, audio engineering way better than I do, um, since that is definitely one of my weaker spots. And like, I'm just so excited to get to collaborate with people, not only of like minds, but of completely different minds. Absolutely. Um, who can be like, oh, you know, this would sound really good with like, you know, this instrument. And I would have be like, I would have never thought of that. Um, and I think I definitely also have like a lot of goals in mind for when mm -hmm. I'm at Yale. Um, and like, I just know that being able to follow my own kind of intuition is definitely going to like get me where I need to be. Like that's that's definitely one thing that I've like learned through my lifetime is like, I just need to follow, you know, for lack of a better expression, follow your heart. Um, but like, it's true. Um, sometimes you just need to do what you know is, is right for you. And absolutely. So my grandma always said to me, follow your heart, the money will follow. Mm -hmm. So I'm still dirt poor, but I'm doing what I love to do. So it doesn't matter. I don't care. Right. If mm -hmm. you're happy, you don't need money. I'm exactly. serious. I'm serious about that. So I want to ask you about your Lenny Bruce connection. Um, so a few years, probably in like my junior year, I went through this whole thing where I was like obsessed with classic comedy. Like everything, like I wrote a speech um, for like a, spe a state speech competition about the history of censorship in comedy because that was something I was really passionate about. And I was like, I want to teach everyone like kids my age don't really know about like Lenny Bruce or George Carlin or Richard Pryor or anyone like that and that was just something that I was just really interested in um and mostly because my dad like would get me into things and um but yeah I mean I think Lenny Bruce just for me like kind of almost symbolizes that like square peg mentality like just unabashedly himself saying whatever he wants to say and you know he was arrested several times for that literally like, he was pulled off stage you know by police officers and like I don't know um like obviously you know times have changed and you know his actual content is different or his actual content like you know um reads differently now than it did then but like the spirit behind it I think is just so like powerful and he's definitely like one of my uh, like big inspirations. Well, he's a big inspiration to you. If you could pull one human into your thought press, who has inspired you more than anybody else in the world? And I will be surprised if you don't give the answer that I think you're going to give. Okay. Um, who's inspired me the most more than anyone? This is a difficult question because this is kind of like the like, who would you eat dinner with if you could eat dinner with anyone dead or alive? Um, I think just amazing lyricists, John Darnielle of the Mountain Goats is by far like, in my opinion, like one of the greatest lyricists ever. Um, but I think right now, maybe, maybe Andy Kaufman because 
he's so wacky and he's so out there and just like you know if he was alive today like I wonder I always wonder like what he would be doing um but I think just like someone who can really nail that like unexpected twist like who really just took an unexpected approach to life Mm -hmm. um I just think that's so awesome and like um like good for them you know (laughs) but I don't know I don't know it's a difficult question that's what I do Ask difficult questions. Yeah. <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> I'm surprised that you didn't answer your parents. <laughs> whoops. <laughs> not whoops. Not whoops. Because your mind goes in your own way. How have your parents influenced you? Um, big time. They definitely like let me do what I wanted when I was a kid. Not like in a bad way, but they just were like, "Oh, you want to take, you know, you want to take an art class instead of, uh, I don't know." Or whatever class like yeah you can do that um and so that was really helpful just to have like um support like that and like mm-hmm. endless uh yeah just just like i guess support is the only word i can really think of just support and uh, uh generosity you know and just a willingness to let me like follow my path and trust that you know i'll end up where i need to be And you will end up where you need to be. You're an amazing young woman. I'm thrilled to have you on my show. Go off to Yale and change the world, one person at a time. Keep writing music and bring it back. Next time you're ready to bring back music, you just let me know, and you're welcome to come back anytime you want. Awesome. Thank you so much. Would you be um, willing to take us out with another song? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Unhook. Well, Sophie is getting hooked up to her guitar. Let me remind you to, again, check your neighborhoods. Make sure that your elderly neighbors have food in their fridge and fresh water and plenty of heat. And if you have young children on your block, make sure they have socks on. Make sure they have warm jackets. If you need help with that, please reach out to me. I'll let you know where you can find resources for all those things. Check in your community to make sure that your community is getting the things that it needs. Check in with the Homeless Hospitality Center and see if you can donate anything to them. Also, the um, Community Meal Center is desperately in need of some support. So check with these places. Remember, our community is our home. Our home is our community. What we give to our community is what comes back to us. Keep it up. I love you all, and I'll see you next week. Thank you, Sophie. All right. Static fizzles out quietly as the TV goes to bed. I am laying on the floor beneath it, tired eyes turned red. The other kids are skipping dimensions on acid shrooms and weed. And I am posed so unremarkably for a dead TV, as you can see. It's just me. I am prone to asking questions and catching on too late. Like the fish that loves the sun but always takes the bait. And I like dumb things like magazines and books that I don't get. The first breath after a shower When you're cold and soaking wet As you can guess You know the rest But I know how the cards are played When I'm not there And the world is free from all cares Not global warming or bad hair I know that I steer my ship off course, but only when things start to get worse, and it's either that or some blood curse. I knew you as 
the girl in the mirror who vaguely resembled myself and you acted so nonchalant as if you didn't know anyone else and when i waved you waved back on the other side when my face was partially obstructed by